I'm Erik Lindahl, and I'm a professor of biophysics in Stockholm. So um, I'm actually a professor both at the Royal Institute of Technology, where we're developing GPU technology simulation programs. And at Stockholm University, I have a fairly big group using molecular simulations to understand biological systems, uh, big macromolecules such as proteins, ion channels, DNA, with simulations. I, th I guess we've all heard that CPUs are getting faster all the time. That's true to some extent in the sense that we're getting more and more and more CPU cores. But these CPU cores are slower all the time. And that has been a horrible limitation for simulations, because if I want to simulate a molecule for a very long time, say microsecond simulation time, then I'm depending on having lots and lots and lots, millions or hundreds of millions of iterations. And that is surprisingly becoming harder and harder on CPUs because the clock frequency is lower. By using GPUs now, we can move up a factor three or four in absolute simulation performance, which means that we can reach simulations that simply were not possible two or three years ago with CPUs, no matter how much you paid for it. So Gromex is a program to simulate interactions of molecules and particles so that we do this bottom up really, understand, simulate how particles are moving, how they're interacting and how they're binding. This is useful for instance in the pharmaceutical industry and we understand how a drug binds to a protein. There are a whole lot of people using Gromax to understand the membranes and membrane proteins such as we do in my group. And then there is an entire fraction using this in material science. So pretty much anything that consists of particles and really complicated systems that interact, you use Gromax to simulate it. So we started using CPUs in combination with GPUs experimentally in Gromax, already in Gromax 4.5. Our challenge then was that it was only a very small part of the program that was accelerated and also that GPUs, we could only use them in a workstation mode, we couldn't use hundreds of GPUs in clusters, which was exciting but it's also very limited. We couldn't really use it for the largest problems we had. So with Gromax 4.6 we pretty much started from scratch again and we rewrote an implementation where we're using now both the CPU and the GPU at the same time. So this was a tour de force for us, but it's proven exceptionally useful. So we, we now have an implementation where the user doesn't really feel that you're using a GPU. It's magically faster, but every single feature in Gromax works because we still have the CPU around to control everything for us. So the reason why we can understand biology and ion channels is that we can simulate almost an order of magnitude longer today than we could only a couple of years ago. And the reason why this has become possible is that Gromax is so much better at parallelizing, using all the resources in your computers. But those resources are not random ones. Um, the significant difference is that today, we're always trying to use both the CPU and the GPU. And the GPU we're driving entirely with CUDA, so none of this would have been possible without NVIDIA's technology. As much work as this has been, I think the important message is to get on this bandwagon as quickly as you can. Um, it's not necessarily going to be easy to program GPUs if you want to utilize their potential to 100%. But just as vector computers died out, I think general purpose machines are going to be gone within 10 years. So the question is not whether you are willing to do this change, but are you going to be ahead or behind the vacuum?